Oh, I finally get to get yelled fishing. Finally. And on camera. <laughs> and you know what? It, you, you, it's been a while, right? We get out every year in the summer and you, we always have good luck out here at Kootenai Lake. We do, yeah. You get, you're the Whistler Queen. Oh. You love to catch those white fish, but you get some nice <laughs> rainbows. But it's going to be fun today. It is. So it's fishing with my daughter Amanda today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Just like that, oh, that might be, you know what? That looks like a kokanee. Oh, you almost jumped in the boat. Here, let me get the net. I think that is a kokanee. I think you got a kokanee there. And that's the thing about this lake. So yeah. you've got everything. You've got bull trout, rainbows, kokanee, whitefish, uh, northern pike minnows, you got them all. Oh, and he was fighting good, wasn't he? Yeah. But see how he was jumping? So whenever they jump like that and they're chrome, yeah. it's usually a kokanee. And of course, we got to catch and release. Yeah. There's no retention on kokanee, which we do all the time, anyways. So if you just lift his head out, slide him in the net, and there he is. And that is a little kokanee. So we don't like to touch the kokanee because they don't handle that well. But there's uh, the bulldog, and there's a kokanee there. Sure, everybody, I'm not going to handle him. I'm just going to hold him in the net. Whoa. But that's it. See how chrome he is? See how silver? Yeah. See beauty. how beautiful that is? And we're just going to let him go. On the side here. And there he goes. Nice little kokanee. Now, now you got kokanee slime oh. on you. Way to go, Moose. That's <laughs> right away, like you just started. So why don't you show everybody the fly? There it is. You hold that back there. Little bulldog. You know what? That is Don's personal bulldog with a twist. I always change it every year. That fly caught an eight pound bull trout last week. How many rainbow did it catch us last night? Quite a few. Quite a few, Quite a exactly. Few. And now it already started with a kokanee. Yeah. Way to go! Way to Let's go. get some more. That's it. Whoa, look at him rip. Whoa, look at that. Right at us in the boat. Whoa. Oh. Whoa, see that's what rainbows do though, right? You gotta try to catch up to them. Oh no. Oh, did you know there's it right there? Right there. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah, but those are the rainbows. See how he's coming at me? Yeah. So he's shaking the hook as he's jumping. That was about, uh, you know, same as yours, like three to yeah. four pound, beautiful rainbow. Yeah. But that's what they do. See, that's the beauty of a barbless hook, right? It, you gotta keep the pressure on him. So when he was coming towards me, you know, with that barbless hook, which we have to use, they can just shake it. Yeah. So, you know, as I got him close, he's probably got it shook in a bit and off he goes. Off he went. Long line release. Would have liked to have shown everybody, but that's the way it goes. And we just had the ferry go by and we're just <laughs> rocking away. But that's all right. So get it going. And I can't believe you haven't got a little whistler yet. Oh. I know, you're the white fish queen. <laughs> Normally you're nailing those white fish. Get serious now. I will. Okay. <laughs> It's heavy. I don't know if it's a rainbow yet or a, or a bull trout, but he's hanging down. Yeah. He's holding down, real holding down. Look at that. You know, I've got a six-way rod, 10-footer, which I like to cast out here. And again, on a, on a lighter line. Wow. What is that? Maybe it's a bull trout, I Amanda. Yeah, I can't tell yet. That might be a big bully because we get a lot of, of big bull trout in here too. Oh, no, it's a beautiful rainbow. Look at is the colors it? on that. Oh, oh yeah. You're gonna love the colors on this one. Jeez, I can't get him up. Look at my rod. Okay, as soon as I get his head up. Yeah. Oh, no, he's not no. ready yet. No. See, that's a beauty out here. You get every kind of fish possible. 
I can come out in May or June and catch five different species, right? We'll get the whitefish, bull trout, big rainbows, uh, of course, with northern pike minnows, and uh, what's Colin Kokanee? <laughs> oh, there he is, man. Oh, no. Oh, man. And you know, the thing is, we've got, you know, we're using pretty stout pound tests because we are in a bit of a current. I've got, uh, I've got 10 pound tests on the end here, so you can be pretty forceful, but these fish can, can wear it out because you are pulling them back. So you don't want to be shy with the leader, and they're not leader shy either. Oh, man. <laughs> Aren't they good fighters? Oh, yeah. Just unreal. I can't get them up. Okay, this yeah. time. This is the time. This time. I got them. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Holy cow. As soon as you get their head out of the water, you're good, like that. <laughs> get them? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. that's... That's a nice bow, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Okay, I'll give you this. I'll let you hold my rod. There's a bulldog. Ooh, just hanging on the side of his mouth, right in the top it? lip. Yeah. There's okay. the bully out. Okay. And I'll just, there he is there. Look at that. Look at the size of him. That's a 24 inch net. That is a gorgeous rainbow. Look at how beautiful they are. Beautiful. Hey? Eh? Oh, yeah. Look at the pretty colors. And you know, that's beautiful. If you're not keeping them, don't touch them. Don't hold him, you know, I just like to, he's got a good fight. If you want, you can just kind of let him revive in the net a little bit, point him upstream. And then when he's ready to go, he'll be ready to go. And there he goes. Just like that, he's gone. Sweet. Nice. Okay, so. You've got a nice kokanee to start. Yeah. I finally got one in, a rainbow, because <laughs> you were kicking my butt until then. And then I lost that nice rainbow, and we even haven't even hit the good spot yet. Uh -huh. So what do you think? It's great. And I got to ask you a question. Oh gosh. Why didn't you enjoy fishing when we were when you were younger? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. I know. Well, I thought it was boring, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> but now that I have a high stress job. Yeah. It's yeah, like you're an RN, an, you're yeah. a registered nurse at the hospital in Emerge, yeah. which is pretty high stress. Yeah. So what do you find? Is it relaxing? It's relaxing. Yeah. It's an outlet. You get to be out in this beautiful lake. I know. And I reeling in fish. Finally, you're what, yeah. 20? Oh, don't say my okay, age. Okay, I won't say your age. You're in your <laughs> 20s, but it's taking you 20 some years to enjoy fishing. I love it. I love it too. Cool. It's good. Okay, let's get some more. All right. This episode brought to you by The Frog Boat, Islander Precision Reels, and Maui Jim. Today on the bench, I want to tie you up the copper dog. It's just the bulldog with a twist. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a Mustad R74 size 6. Some 6 aught nano silk, black as a thread some 0.015 non-lead wire for the weight, some burnt orange marabou for the tail, some medium copper tinsel chenille for the body, some heavy copper wire for the rib, an olive grizzly saddle hackle for the first hackle, and some burnt orange grizzly for the second hackle. I always like a little bit of weight on the fly, so to start the fly off, before I put my thread on, I'm just gonna wrap in some small non-lead wire. And again, it's 0.015, it's quite small. It's just gonna add just a little bit of weight to the fly. Move it up, get it close to your eye. And you see I've got some left and just wrap back. Put on, so it's about, you know, two thirds the length of the hook. And that'll help build up the body and add a bit of weight. Now the weight's tied in, I'm gonna put on my thread, build up a little bit of a dam in front of the weight and go to the back. Add a little more in there so the body's nice and tapered. Cut off your excess. And now we're gonna get ready to tie in our other ingredients. Now that we have the body weighted, I've taken a, actually two good clumps of my marabou, my burnt orange marabou. I'm gonna make it as long as the length of that hook. Move it to the back and tie it in for the tail. Now I always like to take one or two wraps behind that tail. And then go over and back and front. And that's just gonna hold it so it stays nice and parallel with the hook. Now that we have the tail tied in, I've taken some heavy copper wire. And I like the heavy copper wire because I really want to form a rib on this fly. And I'll 
Leave that off and we'll use that to rib up later. Keep that off the back of the hook. I'm now gonna take my copper tinsel. And again, you could use a variety of, of different chenilles, but this one is what makes the copper dog special. It's got a really nice glint and color to it. So tie that in and keep that off the back for tying in the body a little later. Now there's two different ways to tie in your hackle. I like to tie my hackles in by the tips now and pull them forward over the body and it seems to just hold them in place a little bit better. Other people like to tie the body in first, then tie in the hackle, wind them back and wrap it in with your, with your wire. But I prefer this method. So I'm gonna again tie at first my burnt orange hackle in by the tip and that's very important. Make sure you tie it in by the tip. Now I've taken a green grizzly hackle and again I'm gonna tie it by the tip and move it to the back of the hook. And make sure you, you know, you wind in quite a bit in the body. At least half of that hackle is used. So that'll hold it nice and tight. Wrap our thread forward in preparation to tie in the body. Now that we have everything tied in off the back of the hook, I'm gonna wrap in my body and again, you know, taking six or seven turns all the way up and get right up, pull that material back, go right in front right at the eyelet where we left a little bit of room because this actually adds a little bit of weight to the front of that fly which is quite important and tie it off right at the eyelet now that everything's tied in and we have a little bit of weight at the front I'm going to pull this material back and I'm going to just build up the black head on that fly and as you build up that the black head it's going to pull all this hackle back all this material at the front and give you a nice winged look on the very front of the fly now to finish the fly as we always do take your whip finisher do it. so there it is the finished copper dog just by varying the body color you can change this entire pattern stick to the burnt oranges which the fish love you know the combination orange and green is a real good combination and we found that that little bit of glitter with the copper body really offsets this fly. This episode brought to you by The Frog Boat Islander Precision Reels and Maui Jim Oh, that's a nice rainbow, Mooch. Oh, he's oh good. that's a beautiful rainbow. Oh, he's fighting good, isn't yeah. it? Nice rainbow. Not bad. We had to move. You know, we went through our normal spot I always start with in the morning. We usually get some real nice rainbows, oh. but a pretty warm day today. So we came back out to the main lake. And okay, keep your keep the rod tip up. I am. Ah! Keep it this way. Steer them. Steer them. Keep the rod tip that way. There you go. And just steer the fish. So that's it. I'm... Yeah. No, you're doing good. You're doing good. Yeah, crap. we're auto anchored now. So again, yeah, keep your rod tip high. Yeah. I'm gonna get my rod out of the way here. Okay, and then once you get them close, keep your rod tip high. Yeah. And once you get them up, try to get his head out of the water and then you can slide him in the net. Well, he's a nice rainbow. He looks to be about three pounds. Yeah. Maybe bigger. Oh yeah, he's a beauty. He's a beauty. Yeah, that's a real nice fish. Okay, keep your rod tip high, it's keep bringing high. him up. Yeah, now lift his head out of the water, try to get it higher and put more yeah. tension on him. There you go, there, and I got him. Yeah. There he is there. Oh, and he really, yeah, he grabbed it. So there's the, there's the bulldog right in the side. So I'll just undo the bulldog here. The fly, hold that net. Okay, whoa. Okay, come on, it's right in the, there he is. Okay, bulldog's out. So now what I'll let you do is I'll show you what we do. So you keep the fish in the water. Now, when I lift them up, wet your hands. Okay, now when I lift them up, yeah. just hold them up briefly. Don't squeeze them. Okay. And then we're gonna put them back in the net. And I'm gonna hold the net. Okay, so just try to grab them by the tail when you can. Yep, just like that. Hold them up, just like that. Perfect, there he is there. 
and you keep the thing. One, two, three, you'll get your pitcher, put him back in, and then what we'll do, since he's nice and fresh, he's just gonna swim away. We'll just let him revive a bit, and just like that, see, and there he goes. And he's gone. And he's gone. Nice bow. So that was a good hit. That's good. A little windy, but you know what? It's good. It's actually, uh, you know, we're going to fish this whole run. Yeah. And the rainbows love to sit here. So they're in a little bit deeper water. We fish shallow water to start. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we come back, we'll show everybody the setups that we're using. Perfect. You've got my favorite setup, of course. And I'm killing you. Let's talk a little bit about why we're fishing the area we fish. So, you know, Cooney Lake's a big, big lake. And this is considered the mouth of the lake. It goes into the west arm. And it really shallows up, so it goes on a big ridge where the ferries go. There's a nice deep channel, you know, it's 20, 25 feet deep, so the ferries can get through. But where we start is around 20 feet off a ledge, and then it comes up on a big ledge where these buoys are. It goes right up to about 10 feet when the water's at a good level. And all the bull trout, kokanee, rainbows, everything stack along here waiting for food to push through. Because it's, it's almost like a very, very slow moving river. And the two ways to approach it. If you're gonna work it, you've got a, you know, this Minn Kota we have as far as an electric motor to hold you there is perfect, right? It's got a GPS, it's excellent. Or you can anchor, but anchoring's, it's not the best way because it's still a very gravelly bottom. Uh, the ideal setups, I've got a real nice setup. So I've got a, a five weight system. So this gets me a little higher in the water column, which I don't mind. Amanda, I've got her on my favorite setup, which is actually a deep setup. It's a, it's a deep seven, it gets you to the bottom in a hurry. So you want two different setups when you're out here. You don't want to be fishing the same zone. So if the rainbows are up high, I'm going to cover them with this line. And if they're down lower, Amanda's got them covered with that line. And again, all we're doing, just cast straight across, you know, just down across. So we're holding, the current's kind of going parallel or, you know, perpendicular. Cast straight out across, let the fly line sink down, keep your rod tip low and let that fly swing across. You know, and we're normally fishing anywhere from 15 to 12 feet of water. And it works. So we've got a few, but we need some more. We're gonna keep working our way down. Oh, that's a nice one. I'm gonna try to get my hand out of your way. Oh. Yeah. That's either a nice rainbow or a, or a real nice kokanee. Oh. That's good, you're playing them good. Oh, it's a little guy. Oh. It's not that little, that's pretty nice. <sighs> All right. This looks good, man. Yeah. Looks like a, looks like a kokanee to me. Oh. See how the way he's jumping? Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. That's a nice kokanee. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I'll get them right way. here. Yeah. Yeah, if you can just pull them into the net now. Yeah, keep his head up, keep pulling. There you go. Nice. Look at that kokanee. Look at the size of it. That's pretty big. That is, look at that. And again, we don't like to oh, oh. grab them, so we'll hold them through the net. We'll yeah. show everybody, but look at the, look at the beautiful, I mean, that's a little sockeye salmon, right? That's what kokanee are. They're yeah. Just sockeye salmon and they're, oh. Well, I can't hold them that way, but... <laughs> Don't let them revive much at all. Just let them revive in the net. Yeah. Make sure he's good to go. And there he goes. Gone. Wow. Well, I caught the last fish of the day. You certainly did. <laughs> so, what'd you think of the day? That was great. That was really fun. It was, thanks, wasn't it? Thanks for finally taking me out. Oh, yeah, there's a <laughs> shot. No, but it was great. It was great to have you out. Yeah. You know, like you said before, we never really got into it as kids. You never no. did. You were no. kind of, you were too busy. You were a competitive swimmer, right? You went to nationals. You were, yeah. you were busy. Volleyball, basketball. Yeah. That's what happens when you're into sports. Yeah. But now you're at an age, you moved home, and you're loving it. I'm loving it. Well, we're going to get out lots. Yeah. So now what I always say, I always say, hey, everybody, you know, if you come out here, you got to take care, conserve our waters, and... We'll see, we'll see you next time on Sport Fishing on the Fly. Very good. We'll <laughs> see you next time when we take Sport Fishing on the Fly. Close. Good day. Good day. <laughs>